let's discuss the question and answers of human eye and colorful world of class 10th the first question what is meant by power of accommodation of the eye the ability of the eye lens to adjust its focal length is called accommodation the lenses that we use in our laboratory have fixed focal lengths but the eye lens can adjust its focal length to see the distinct things it adjusts itself in such a way that the focal length is suitable for seeing the distinct things similarly with the nearest things second question a person with a myopic eye cannot see objects beyond 1.2 meter distinctly that means his power point has become 1.2 meter for the normal eye the power point is infinity so now to correct this defect we have to make use of a lens which will bring the image from infinity to 1.2 meter so here u is equal to infinity v must be 1.2 meter and then with appropriate sign conventions we can find out 1 by f that is only known as power here in this case the power is minus 1 by 1.2 diopters why minus because to correct the defect we have to make use of diverging lens or concave lens the next question what is the far point and near point of the human eye with a normal vision the far point is infinity and the near point is 25 cm which is also known as least distance of distinct vision next question a student has difficulty reading the blackboard while sitting in the last row what could be the defect the child suffering from how can it be corrected the student is suffering from myopia that means he can see the near nearest things clearly and he cannot see the distant things that is the things that are away from his eye to correct this we have to make use of concave lens now let's discuss the question and answers of exercises the first question the human eye can focus on objects at different distances by adjusting the focal length of the eye lens this is due to just now we have studied what is the meaning of accommodation so this is due to accommodation so option b is correct now the human eye forms the image of an object at its retina we know that the retina acts like screen in our eye so option d is correct next the least distance of distinct vision for a young adult with normal vision is about 25 cm so option c is correct here the change in focal length of an eye lens is caused by the action of the ciliary muscles when we talked about the construction of eye it is discussed that ciliary muscles can contract or can relax so ciliary muscles is the answer for it and option c so we know that the relation between the focal length and the power they are reciprocals to each other so power is nothing but the reciprocal of focal length when the focal length is expressed in meter so in the first case 1 by minus 5.5 which is equal to 0.18 meter and in the second case it is 1 by 1.5 which gives us 0.67 meter next the far point of a myopic person is 80 cm in front of the eye what is the nature and the power of lens required to correct the problem so for any normal eye the far point is infinity so we have to make use of a lens which brings the image from infinity to 80 cm so that the person can see that image clearly 
Now, by applying this lens formula with proper sign convention, u becomes infinity and v, that is, the object is to be appeared in the form of image at 80 centimeters for him. So, by substituting these values, we will get minus 1 by 80 is equal to 1 by f. Uh, this 80 is in centimeters, so it should be converted into meter so that we have divided it by 100 here and then this 100 will go to the top. Finally, the answer will be minus 1.25 diopter. The nature of lens is concave and the power is 1.25 diopter. Now, we have to make a diagram to show the hypermetropia. So here, the lens required for correcting his defect is convex lens. Here, in this case, near point is given as 1 meter, but near point for normal eye is 25 centimeters, that is 1 by 4 meter. To correct this defect, we have to use a lens which can shift the object from 25 centimeter to 1 meter. So here u is 25 centimeter and v is 1 meter. Now let us substitute the values along with the proper sign in the lens formula 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f. Here 1 meter is given as the far point that means the 25 centimeters object is to be shifted to 1 meter. So u is equal to 25 centimeters which can be written as 1 by 4 meters by applying the values with proper sign convention we get 3d as the power. To correct this defect a convex lens of 3 diopter power is to be used. Here I have shown with a demonstration how to correct this defect. So this is the setup of normal eye where the image is obtained far behind this retina. Let's consider that this is retina and the image is far behind the retina. Now I am placing one more convex lens such that the image is exactly obtained at the retina. Let's watch it. So now we can see the rays are converged and the image is formed at the retina. If we remove then the image is obtained far behind the retina. When we put the corrective lens, it, the image is obtained exactly on the retina. Now, why is a normal eye not able to see clearly the objects placed closer than 25 centimeter? The ciliary muscles can relax or can contract by virtue of which the eye lens can change its focal length. But ciliary muscles will have certain limit. Beyond certain limit, they can neither contract nor similarly in the upper limit nor they can relax. So here the ability of the eye lens to adjust its focal length is called accommodation. That's what we have studied. The accommodation has got a limit. The ciliary muscles cannot contract beyond certain limit. So our eyes cannot see the objects clearly placed very close to the eye before 20 centimeters from the eye. What happens to the image distance in the eye when we increase the distance of an object from the eye. In laboratory conditions, when we change the object distance, then image distance will also be changed because there the focal length is constant. But in the case of eye lens, the focal length is adjusted and image distance is constant. So for this, the answer is image distance remains constant and when we see this relation 1 by v minus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f here the v remains constant so when we increase or decrease u according to that this focal length will be
changed. So that is the difference between the normal lenses and the eye lens. Now the next question, why do stars twinkle? Stars twinkle because of atmospheric refraction. As stars are far from the earth, they can be considered as point sources of light. When light comes from such far off distances, it will undergo refractions due to multiple layers of atmosphere with different refractive indices. So, we can see an apparent shift in the position of the star. Sometimes the light comes from the star with more intensity and sometimes the light comes with less intensity and causes the stars to twinkle. In this figure, it is shown how the original light bends and where the person can see the position of the star. So it is appeared as if it is shifted. So this is called apparent position of the star and this is original position of the star. And the refractive index is continuously increasing for the different layers of Earth's atmosphere. Now explain why the planets do not twinkle. So when stars are twinkling, why not planets? The basic difference between the stars and planets is that the planets are situated very close to the earth. So they cannot be treated as point sources. In fact, they are treated as extended sources. So now, the first reason they are close to the earth. Second reason, they are not to be considered as point sources of light. They are treated as extended sources. Now, the average intensity in the case of a star is completely varied. Sometimes we get brighter light with larger intensity and sometimes we get the light with lower intensity. The average intensity of light comes from the planets is more or less all the time is same and there is no apparent shift as it is an extended object. So the planets will not twinkle. Why does the sun appear reddish early in the morning? Not only in the morning, even in the evening also it appears reddish. In the morning and evening, the sun that is at the time of sunset or sunrise, the sun rays have to travel longer distance to reach the Earth's horizon. So when sun rays are traveling these longer distances, most of the components of light that is the colors because white light is the combination of seven colors and out of all the seven colors red is having larger wavelength and remaining wavelengths are are very small when compared to red scattering power is inversely proportional to lambda more is the lambda less is the scattering so as for the red color the scattering is very less it only reaches from sun to the eye of the observer but all other colors will be scattered in between in the atmosphere so that's the reason why we see the appearance of sun in reddish color at the time of sunset or at the sun time of sunrise so here at noon these rays are to travel shorter distances therefore the colors will be less scattered whereas if it is far off then this sun rays have to travel longer distances and then more scattering takes place. This can be shown with a simple demonstration here. Here I took a beaker and I filled with water and then I added some drops of Dettol into it and then I focused the light then I placed the screen a bit far off from the beaker so now you can see two things at a time this is becoming red at the same time if you observe the light in the beaker it is in blue color so this explains why sky is blue 
and then this the other part of this activity explains why the sun appears in reddish color at the time of sunset or sun rise why does the sky appear dark instead of blue to an astronaut as there is no atmosphere in the outer surface of the earth no scattering takes place or the prominence of scattering is very less so the sky appears dark to an astronaut with that answer we came to an end of this lesson hope you would have enjoyed the way of answering the questions